Hi, and welcome to Rethink Dialogue. In this episode, we're going to sit down with Nicholas Roop, who is the Executive Creative Director of POKE in London. Um, he's going to share some thoughts and some perspectives on how communication and media is going to change in the future. Let's go and talk. Hi, Nicholas. Welcome to Rethink Dialogue. Um, first question I always start with is, so tell me a little bit about your background yeah. and what you're doing and yeah. your role here at POKE. Uh, so background, I studied fine art, uh, so contemporary practice, sculpture, and, um, and then left in 94 and then got immediately involved with interactive media, so oh. CD-ROMs and kind of kiosks. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, uh, actually, initially I got an art, art project called Anti-ROM. And then, uh, sort of three, three and a half years into that, then um, I set up another agency business, mm -hmm. a London office mm -hmm. called Avon Digital. Probably the most notable piece of work we did was Tiffany.com. Ah. And then after that was right in the dot com bubble period. So we worked with a couple of big startups, big, big aggressive, you know, lucrative projects. And then everything disappeared, and we uh, we died. And then spun poke up more or less out of out of that um, in two thousand one, and then been here ever since. So. I'm, I'm the, basically the creative director, mm -hmm. uh, and have been yeah since since inception. So yeah, cool. here I am still, still, twelve years going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about Poke. What what is Poke? So Poke is Poke is a creative company. We describe it as a creative company, and the way that we um, describe what we do is we we um, uh, uh, define, create, and craft unforgettable digital in brackets experiences okay meaning that that you know we, we effectively you know we, we drive the sort of strategy and obviously the creativity the sort of synthesis and the, the making and the imagining mm. part and the craft mm. so you know making it deliberate not necessarily all the elements actually making it hands-on but we're very you know deeply involved in the craft of, of making things and and you know that ambition to create kind of unforgettable experiences is very high in our yeah, you know, on our kind of on our agenda, and the reason why we call them unforgettable is, you know, digital is kind of full of very sort of superficial, transient, mm. novelty-driven stuff, and you know we're trying to sort of steer it the other way and, and really focus on the you know the salient and the meaningful and the lasting and the enduring things, mm -hmm. um, in a very sort of <laughs> abstract <laughs> conceptual level. But it seems, I mean, that's 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 you know that's really why we started. What, mm -hmm. what the, 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 the sort of dream that brought us together and this is still the sort of glue that keeps keeps the business sort of roughly going in the, the same direction. Right. Um, would, you def would you be as bold to say that POC is kind of the future agency? Um, I think we try to, I mean, in the sense that we think we, you know, we, we're, we're sort of relentless in our pursuit of mm. where the real action is, mm. where, the, you know, where the rewards are highest, both in terms of Creativity, mm. reputation, and then the, obviously the biggest driver of all being the, the tangible rewards for our client businesses. Mm. So, you know, we, we, we you know, we're not, you know, we sort of operate outside of the consensus of the industry and a very sort of purist, really, in mm. in our pursuit of this, of perfection, meaning, you know, really potent potent work that we're really proud of. Mm. Um, so, and I think in that regard, you know, if we're open and we're you know, we have the talents to back it up, then that surely will drive us in a direction that probably the, you know, the future will arrive at at some point as well. Because yeah. you know, um, I think the, you know, the slower moving beasts probably probably aren't you know don't don't share that uh, don't share that agenda mm. uh, and are subsequently probably slower moving. So perhaps you know, I'd I'd, lo I'd love to think that we're <laughs> that we the future it would validate our yeah, you know, the the, um, the the way that we operate. Yeah. So I've 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 sometimes used the the, the whole so the def definition of what I think marketing should do at the moment is like kind of it's either about disrupting it or die. Yeah. Because the way of doing the way the, the, the marketing in a traditional way, the way a lot of the bigger agencies are doing is yeah. not really making a change for no, anyone. No. no. Um, how do you help your clients engage the audience? So it's a. I mean, the, the the way that we engage the audience is very. Uh, it, yeah, it's a it's a it's a real kind of conundrum to solve, mm. and, and and the answer really comes out right at the end. Mm. Um, I think the way that we, you know, 
what's very important to us is, that, is, is, is thinking, you know, being, you know, working with clients to develop the scope for us to think holistically mm. and to understand that, you know, any, any, anything across the whole estate and beyond could be relevant and powerful in mm. delivering their objectives. Mm -hmm. um, and digital has that nature to it. Mm. Every client, every problem is different. It, the, the anatomy mm. of, of, of digital, you know, will surface, you know, certain options and opportunities mm. differently every single time. So, in a way, a big part of what we're doing is, is, is you know, trying to trying to discover those, mm. you know, those, those 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 things. And obviously, a part of that, you know, a big part of that, most of the time, is about, you know, ultimately the pursuit of, you know, engagement of some way, shape, or form. Mm. Um, understanding that engagement is the beginning of another process, you know. Just exactly. get, I mean, engagement is just sort of getting their attention or, or, you know, developing a relationship or locking a kind of relationship in, in somewhat, you know, mechanically. But then, mm. you know, obviously, what happens next, which is the next kind of chapter of, of you know, what, what, we, what we handle. Um, yeah, I don't know if that was a weird, long answer. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. Um, so a lot of companies are now focusing a lot of their, or most of their efforts actually on content marketing. Yeah. So how to generate content, how to engage, and then, so what are your perspectives when it comes to content marketing? Is that the, the future way of, of thinking? Yeah, I think content marketing is an interesting trend because mm. obviously everybody's all over it. Mm. But I think when you ask most people what they, what they mean by content marketing, they really mean um, YouTube and, and video as, as, as content, as the sort of the content strategy is really a video, a video yeah. strategy. Yeah. Um, I think coming from, you know, coming to the content story from where we come, then we would probably understand content more as a broader set of experiences of which video is a, plays a vital part. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the reason I would argue that that's, that's probably a more kind of uh, progressive way of thinking is, you know, video is still within the digital realm. You, mm. you know, if your content is, you know, is powerful and engaging, then it's it's a jump off to a number of different places to do a number of different things that are useful, mm. either to them or to, you know, or to the business. Mm. So, so thinking about it as a siloed, you know, as a sort of siloed bubble in its own right, it's actually counterproductive. You want to look at content video. You know those relationships that you're that are forming through through that content, and you're building. You know communities you're building around it. You want to look at them in a more connected way. We would say, mm. and also not to disregard other types of experiences, complementing mm. complementing those videos. Because again, you, you know YouTube is a, is one of the obviously it's one of the biggest biggest networks and platforms, but it's not the only one. No. And, and it, it's great at some things. It's also not brilliant at other things. Mm. And and. Yeah, I think you, you, what you want to bring to bear with digital is the full force mm. of, of, of the not just the, the, the kind of intensity of you know of the numbers and exposure and engagement, but mm. also the breadth mm. and the, you know the, the ability to you know do, offer very different kind of value in different ways to different people, and again sort mm. of leverage those audiences in different ways depending what you know what they're what they're interacting with. So. So I think it's right. I mean, the content sort of revolution, whatever it is, 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 a, is a positive thing in a way, but it, it's a bit like the old kind of viral revolution or the old social yeah. media revolution, which is it, you know, it excites people, which is a good thing. Mm. So it gets people looking at it and thinking about it, but then it also actually narrows, narrows the scope. Mm. And it makes content about YouTube and actually, you know, for, for, you know, ultimately what we're concerned about is influencing people's behavior. Yeah. And you know, video might be a great way of doing that, but it might not be either. And if you're not sort of open to that discussion, then then you're, you're potentially shooting all your exactly you know in you the know, wrong budget way. and attention in the wrong way, <laughs> yeah. and then you, do, you sort of don't really want to do that. No, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> um, another buzzword within our industry is uh, native advertising. Yeah, um, and. Some people think that native advertising is disrupting and destroying the relationship between the brand and the consumer. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts when it comes what to... Do you, what do you mean by native advertising, by the way? Uh, so, content in the stream that is promoted or paid for. Uh, yeah. For example, BuzzFeed is now collaborating with Ford and other yeah, strong yeah, brands. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's like product placement, effectively. I mean, of exactly. The, in a new, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's been around for a while, actually. It's, it's interesting. I read three or four years ago how the whole, even within television, the, they're deregulating mm. product placement quite a lot. Okay. I think recognizing that, that you know, uh, sort of dis disruptive advertising mm. you know, around, around the programming is, 
you know, increasingly ineffective and obviously broadcasters know mm. that you know, eventually that's going to start killing their economies because you know, if people are all watching things on PBRs and, and you know, buzzing by their ads then yeah. you know, it's, not going to be doing, it's not going to create a lot of value. Mm. So, um, so, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense that, and, and obviously in a digital environment, then you're looking at, you know, assets, uh, you know, f- movies and things like that, traveling around quite freely, being, you know, chopped up, reconstituted, redistributed. Mm-hmm. So, you know, even if you manage to kind of force, uh, you know, a message next to a piece of content, which sort of defines an audience and creates a, a useful association for you, those things, those things can as easily be separated mm-hmm. again. So building, you know, building messaging into content is clearly the way to go. And then actually you, mm. you can take the reverse strategy, which is actually allow as much free distribution as possible mm. and actually embrace that natural tendency of, of, of digital assets mm. in, in the network anyway. Yeah. So it kind of makes, it makes, it makes a lot of sense, but obviously there's a, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of problems to solve on kind of experience level mm. and obviously, you know, regulatory uh, you know, sort of regulatory aspects to that as well, but I can see why. I mean, it, it makes it definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah, um, I think also. I think so. One thing that I've noticed is that a lot of people that try to move into that sphere is kind of not putting the efforts in the quality yeah. of what they're producing, and that's actually destroying. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think I mean I think that's the stuff that will will balance out in the end. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, like everything, it's you know it's new territory, so it doesn't necessarily get the budgets and support and the you know. The mm. kind of energy of the, of, the, of, the, of the business to really make it happen. It's always a bit sort of toe in the water, and then it doesn't necessarily build into something. Mm. Um, and I think what we, you know, what we need to see is a, a really concerted effort to you know find that balance between you know how do you make the thing work from a quality point of view? How do you rec- how do you sort of um, you know respect the viewer enough so that it feels like a fair you know a, a sort of fair transaction. Mm. Um, and, and that you, you know, more than that, obviously you try and make the content interesting and engaging in its own right and, you know, you manage to sort of put all those things together in something really compelling and mm. can then build a format to allow that, allow repetition so you could repeat, 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 which is obviously yeah. the whole point of a content strategy is to, is to, is to create a kind of, you know, a, a repeatable uh, experience that people are drawn to and subscribe to and you build community around. Mm. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so um, one thing that I find interesting is, is so it's the, I, I feel that the conversation is no longer about social media. Yeah. It's more about social business or social enterprise. I mean, yeah. Angela, from the CEO from Burberry, has yeah. actually said that if you're not a social enterprise, you're going to be dead in five years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the way they embrace, actually, everything is built out from the mobile screen mm-hmm. and then adapted to the yeah. whole experience. Are you also in that kind of way of working holistically on thinking is not about the paid or owned or earned is yeah. actually the more holistic converged media approach. Yeah, I think, it, yeah, definitely. We're, uh, our, 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 um, again, our, our kind of view on the world is very holistic mm. and we don't, I mean... You're not constrained to. Yeah, the, you know, I think when you look at most sort of quarters within the marketing fraternity, you'll find a lot of prejudices about the value of certain channels over other channels. Mm. Um, and we try to approach it from the other direction, which is with no prejudice. Mm. And we try and look at what's there and learn from what's there and use those insights to build something mm-hmm. compelling. So a very simple example would be Mulberry, which is one of the other barriers, as they're called in the UK. And the site we delivered uh, a few months ago, which went live, actually a lot of the emphasis, a lot of the budget was spent post, um, uh, well, post checkout. So mm-hmm. basically processing the payment. Mm-hmm. So we got like five or six pages down to a single page, all that inline uh, error checking and all that stuff. So it flows beautifully as an experience. It sort of feels a bit counterintuitive, and actually most you mm. know most companies, and certainly in luxury, it's not been done very well, generally mm. speaking. But we felt you know we looked at it all clean. You know we looked at it all with with kind of unprejudiced eyes, and we just thought, well, you know we want to create a luxury experience. Where are the kind of pinch points? Where are the unpleasant bits in the current experience? Mm. You know. All the fashion guys are very good at kind of song and dance up front, presenting lovely images. Yeah. It's just that the, the experience really diminishes and it gets really poor around any of the operational stuff. Yeah. Which is really counterintuitive because actually you look in you look at physical retail and 
and it's not it's not the case. You know, mm. it's, it's very well choreographed and very well handled, very well managed and designed as a as a process and experience. So, like, why doesn't that map into e-commerce? Mm. It's the same individual, it's the same customer. You know, you're at least as competitive because of all the other resellers that you want to kind of take the the retail margin back from. Mm. Um, so, I think that as an as an example. So, I think when you you know we would. We, you know, we try to look at everything that's significant mm. without prejudice, and mm. then build the story up from there, and say where are the you know where are the opportunities that grow out of that. And actually, generally speaking, yeah. the opportunities come out of the places that people don't value very much. Because in the in the market case, you know, we create a very differentiated experience from the other handbag sites, mm. the other luxury um, you know goods sites, because that experience is so great. Mm. Exactly. And because we've we've tackled the, we've tackled something that generally nobody thinks is worth tackling, mm. and yet is actually really meaningful to the consumer, if you see what I mean. So yeah. I think the same is true of, you know, Burberry, you know, Burberry do that really well, which is, you know, a load of things, you know, they break a load of rules in mm. fashion. Yeah. So, you know, the, the catwalk is usually very exclusive, and mm. it's the exclusivity that makes it hot, but mm. Burberry flipped it and said, well, actually, if that's the most interesting time, that's when you want to let everybody in. You know, look, why don't you, you know, rather than just having like Sting and whoever on the, you know, yeah. there on the day watching the thing, why don't you just invite the whole world, you know? Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's that sort of, um, you know, drawing away the prejudices, looking mm. at the world for what it is now with the, all these new, you know, things at our, our disposal, mm. trying to dispel those, those, Bad habits that are formed in different times, yeah. um, and and you know seizing those opportunities and doing it doing it in a fresh way, and obviously sort of dealing with that transition as well. So I mean, Burberry as an example, they've you know they've done that in a very stylish way. Mm. So they've they've disrupted, but they've kind of taken everybody on that journey and they've seduced people all yeah. the way through the process, which is why they've got to a really great position. Mm. You know, and that's that's a it's a difficult thing to pull off. But I think you know when when we're approaching things, we 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 obviously start with where we think the opportunity is, and then we really kind of you try to try to grab on this 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 bigger problem, which is okay. Well, then, you know, it's great we're seeing the opportunity, but not only do you you know do you want to fix that at a kind of a service system level, but you have to deal with it in storytelling terms and in branding terms, and mm. you know, the PR needs to understand, the business needs to understand. You know, the operations might be affected by decisions about yeah. you know cutting things in different ways. Mm. Uh, and that's where the you know that's where the complexity comes. But you get to the end of that process, and then you have something really. You know, really powerful. So, so I think it's, yeah, I totally agree. I think the transition is really, really from social media being considered this sort of peripheral communication, yeah. sort of CRM-y uh, type thing, to being actually something that maps and mirrors the entire uh, entire business. Mm. So when we launched EE last year, I mean, the, the, the understanding and everybody was up to speed with this that. You know, if they wanted to position themselves as, as a digital brand, they have to behave like one. And actually, in terms of you know brand expression, social media is absolutely the most sort of potent expression of brand behaviour. Mm. Because not only is it communicating and, and expressing it, the brand, but it's also reacting, and it's that reactivity that's so defining. Mm. So when you've seen these crises. You yeah. know, the, the commentary is always around how did they react? Mm. So we did this and something came out and it's, it's interesting. And you, you, you know, the reason why those stories are being retold is because they're the most instructive. Mm. They're the ones that tell you what they really think and what they really feel. Mm. Even though obviously a lot of the problems that emerge from those things are more to do with their incompetence at handling the, <laughs> just handling the, the kind of operational yeah. side of, of, of you know trafficking those you know trafficking the, the, the responses. But I mean, still, it's you can see where you know the consumer's heads at, which is they they push it, and the way it reacts tells them a lot about mm. the business's values and what they what they really believe in, not mm. what they say they believe, which is you know yeah. the game changer. Yeah. Um, do you have like? Is there any like sort of principles you would like, from your point of view, that it's important for a brand to think about when it comes to the way marketing is being done? Well, that's, I, actually, I don't, I don't usually do sound bites, but I, had, I made one today by accident. Okay. Um, <laughs> and it's um, uh, in digital, uh, sharing trumps shoving. Well, there you go. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Sharing Trump shoving. As in shoving stuff at you. It's, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a mindset. I think that's the. I did, it only occurred to me recently that it's. Hmm. You know, we 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 are the 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 the, the, the sort of. The internet and the network is predisposed to mm. sharing, yeah. and sharing and openness and collaboration is actually the the the, the, the most yeah. powerful kind of 
de default position when I think in broadcast then that was not mm. the case. It was really more about proprietary yeah. uh, you know, um, philosophies and uh, you know, approaches really. Mm. I think when you look at all the big, the big winners, that's, you know, sharing and collaboration is actually at the, at the core of those propositions and, and um, you know, and the, those brands, whether you're talking about Facebook or Wikipedia or mm. eBay or, you know, they're all effectively sharing mm. platforms in one way, shape or form. Yeah. I mean, even Google is a collaboration between the algorithm and everybody and everything on the internet. It's nothing without the internet. Exactly. Yeah. Um, last question, which I ask everyone on this series, is uh, what inspires you? Where do you find inspiration? Uh, um, just, um, I think it's, yeah. <laughs> I think the most, the most interesting, the most inspiring stuff for me is just find, like, is dealing with waste. It's mm. like, you know, um, countering the, 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 the tendency to be wasteful. Okay. Which is, I mean, you could look at it the other way and about, you know, inspired by kind of concentrating value, mm. finding ways to, to uh, really capitalize and leverage stuff, whether it's, you know, whether it's a product or whether it's a, an idea or whether it's a sort of philosophy or whatever it is. It's, mm. You know, just see so much so much wastage around and I mean a, a bit like the, the Mulberry story in a way like when, when you find somewhere when you find some really rich territory that, that is, feels quite virgin mm. you know, it's, it's, it's new territory the reason why you found it is because you've, you, you sort of put your prejudice to one side mm. and then you just realise that there's so much wastage because people don't haven't, don't look at those things or they don't think about those things in a certain way and actually turning your attention to those things and creating you know creating something new actually creates enormous value but it's all what you're really dealing with there is an inefficiency mm. of, a, of a kind. Mm. You're not necessarily creating value. You're just you're just making things work harder together. You're you know you're you're putting things together and getting more synergy. Mm. And, you know out of, out of the way that you construct those relationships, and that feels good. You know that's something that yeah. you know and there's something very magical about the way the medium works. That mm. if you do get that chemistry right, then it really you know then it really matters. And that's that's I mean I think in terms of sort of satisfaction, no, that those are the those are the experiences that we're always aiming for. I mean, mm. more than awards, more than recognition and those things. It's really just like those moments when it's really, you know, it's really firing up and you really got it right. Yeah. And you really, you know, you really found something that, that you know, you find it, you found something for the first time. Mm. Um, but you're seeing it kind of come to life. I mean, that's, that's incredibly. It's powerful. Powerful and sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much, Nick. Cheers. Yeah.